What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to analyze Python bytecode by disassembling it. So let us get right into it. All right, so this video today is going to be a little bit more technical, even though I'm not going to go into the details too much. But today we're going to learn how to disassemble Python code into bytecode, how to see what's happening behind the scenes if you're using C Python, which is the most commonly used Python implementation. So if you don't know whether you're using C Python or not, you're probably using C Python. It's the basic Python that you can download from python.org. And there is a core Python module called this. So we can just import it by saying import this and this allows us to disassemble Python code. So let me give you a very simple example. Let's say we have a function that we call hello world. And this function just returns hello world. That's all it does. If we want to see what is happening in terms of Python bytecode, all we need to do is we need to print this dot this and then we need to pass the function. We don't call it, we just pass the object and we can run this and you can see what's happening here in the bytecode. It loads a constant hello world and then it returns that value. That's all this function does. This is the Python bytecode that is being executed. Now let's do something else. Let's say we don't just return it. We first say message equals hello world and then we return the message. Now this has the exact same effect, but we create a local variable message. Let's see what the bytecode looks like right now. And you can see that something changed. We have again, we load the constant, but then what we do is we store this loaded constant into the message object or into the message variable, then we load that message variable and we return it. So that's a difference here um, between just returning it directly or creating a variable first, even though the effect is the same the Python bytecode behind the scenes changes. And this is a very simple example. I have prepared a couple of those here. Uh, let's look at adding a couple of values together. So let's say we have a function at or let's call it at one. I'm going to add x and y and this is going to return just x plus y. If we now print this dot this add one, you can see exactly what is happening in terms of bytecode. We load one value x, we load the, uh, the next value y, we perform a binary addition and then we return the value. Quite simple. Now let's add another value z and let's see what happens then actually instead of just writing multiple functions, I'm going to change the existing one every time. So let's just call it add. Now in Python, uh, we say x plus y plus z. And what this means in bytecode is that first of all, we load x and we load y, then we perform an addition, then we load z and we perform another addition, and then we return the value. So we don't load x, y, z and perform an addition. We load x and y, we perform an addition, we load z, perform another one, and then we return the value. So that's still quite simple. Um, let's look at something else. Now we're not going to go into detail into the details of this one. But I just want to show you uh, an interesting thing. If I create a list function here, list function one, and I say that what we want to do here is we want to have results equals empty list for x in range 10. What I want to do is I want to say results dot append x. And I want to return the results. And then I'm going to have a second function list function two. And I want to say that I'm going to return here x for x in range 10, which bas basically accomplishes the same thing. I can print this this list function one, and I can print this this list function two. And you're going to see that we get different results here. Or actually, let me just print something in between. By the way, I don't think that I need to use a print statement, actually. So let me just remove this. I think that the this function itself is already printing. So I don't think that's important. Um, code, byte code two, there you go. And byte code one so that we can see where they start and end. So this is the byte code one, we start with build list store fast and so on. And this is bytecode two. we load something. So you can just see it's different. Again, I don't want to go into details on this one. It's quite complicated. But you can see that it's not the same. And it's also not the same if I actually use a variable. So even if I say results equals um, this list comprehension, then I return it. So it's not just a difference that I have a variable and I don't have a variable in the second one. 
So even if I do it like that, you're going to see that we get different code. So this is bytecode one, it starts like that. And this is bytecode two, it starts like that. Um, so that's the difference. And as we know, list comprehensions are more efficient. So they uh, take less runtime to complete than this structure here. So that's something uh, that's interesting as well. Let's move on to the next example. This is quite interesting, because I have a video on this already. Um, let's say we have a function comp floats compare floats. And let's say what this function does is it returns 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 and checks if that is the same as 0 0.3 and it returns true or false essentially. Now, those of you who have watched my video or know it in general, um, there is a problem with a floating point representation in computers because of the standard um, and 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 represented in computers is not exactly 0 0.3. Mathematically, it's exactly 0 0.3, but in computers, it's 0 0.3000004 or something. Um, and this is because of the floating point representation. And the interesting thing is that this is also visible in the bytecode. So if I say this dot this comp float floats, you can see what actually is happening. It's uh, is it loads the constant 0 0.3000004. Uh, so it basically does the calculation already here, not just when running the code, it does it already when it turns this into bytecode. And you can see that this is now being compared against this, which is why this will return false, even though 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is actually 0 0.3. So this is also visible in the bytecode here. Uh, what else can we do? Let's just look at the basic comparison, how it works with an if statement, we can say we have a function, we pass to that function the value x and if x is equal to five, we can return true. Otherwise, we return false. And we can just say print this, this function. And you can see how this works. It does the comparison pop jump if false jumps to 12, 12 is here 12 returns false. And otherwise, if we don't jump, so basically, we're loading we're loading here the value x, we're loading the constant five, we're comparing them. Uh, if they are the same, then we're going to not jump. If they're not the same, if the comparison returns false, we're going to jump to line 12. And 12 basically returns the value false. And if we don't jump here, we're going to move to the next statement, which is going to load true, and then it returns true. And for some reason, if nothing happens, we're going to return none. That's quite interesting here. Uh, what else do we have here? One thing that you can also do is you can also disassemble uh, a traceback. So you can open up the Python console or the idle. So you can just go to your start menu type idle, and open the idle or you can do it in your development environment. And here you can cause an error now. So you can say something like 10 divided by zero, which is going to cause a zero division error. And now you can just say import this, this dot this. And this is going to use this trace back here to figure out what happened, you can see it loaded the constant 10, it loaded the constant zero. And the exception was caused by this binary statement here by this binary instruction, which is binary true divide. So you can see also what is happening exactly in the bytecode. Um, you can also disassemble strings that contain Python code. So you can also say instead of passing a function here, you can just say this dot this and you can say 10 divided by zero, for example, and this is going to disassemble that. Now it's not disassembling the traceback. So you cannot see any arrow here, because we didn't run that it's just disassembling the statement itself, it didn't cause an exception, it doesn't didn't run the statement, it just translated this statement into bytecode. So this also works. And finally, for this video today, I want to show you why you might care about this at all. Um, outside of curiosity. So why should you even be interested in that. And this is an example I actually found from a YouTube video. Um, I don't know exactly which one it was, there's a talk from a woman that talks about this. So I don't want to take credit for this example. But the example is quite simple, you have a loop that iterates over some values, and then you do something with the values. And the interesting thing is that the loop takes longer when it's outside of a function than when it's inside of a function. So if I do something like uh, 4x in range, and I used here for the example, how many zeros are that? Three, four, five, six, seven, seven zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for x in range that we're going to just say y equals x squared or something. So that's just what I want to do here. Um, and I want to take that statement here. And I want to copy it into a function. So def my function 
is going to do the exact same thing. So that's literally the same thing. If anything, you would say, okay, because I'm creating a function, this might take longer. But the fact is that this executes faster than this. And we can see that this is the case by just importing time and saying that start is equal to time perf counter. And oh, actually, this stays the same. And we can say that int is equal to time perf counter. And then we can print int minus start. And then I can copy that here, I can do the same thing. And I can also print int minus start. Let's see what happens. And that's quite interesting, really, because that's the same code. It's the exact same Python code for x and range, whatever, do that. It's the same thing. Uh, but you can see that actually, this one was very fast. Um, I hope I didn't mess up anything here. Did I do the exact same thing as before? Oh, sorry, I didn't call it. I just defined a function. I need to call it, of course. But even with the function definition and the function call, this is going to be faster. So you see the first one takes 4.13 seconds and the second one takes only 3.55 seconds. And this is not because I'm calling this one first and so it has some, some I don't know, uh, overhead or something. I can also run this one first. It doesn't really matter. Oh, of course, I need to print a time. Sorry about that. So I need to print it down here. Let me rerun this. Um, so now this is running first, and then this is running, and you can see 3.5 seconds here, and 4.2 seconds down here. So even though I'm defining a function here, I'm calling the function here, this is faster than this. Why is that even though it's the same code? Um, the reason for that can be found in the bytecode. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But I want to show you the basic idea, we can remove all this time uh, timing stuff here so that we can focus on the code. Let's just comment this out for a second. And let's just see what's happening um, in the my function code here. So let's say this, this, my function. And let's see what we have here. Now, what you can see here is that uh, we're doing something where we're doing something that is store fast, load fast, store fast. Now, let me just show you here what happens if I just take the code. So if I say this, this, and I'm going to pass this here now as a string, because I don't want to have it in the function, obviously. Um, of course, I need to uncomment everything here. And I don't want to actually run it. So let me comment this out as well. And maybe let's print here a second. <clears throat> so you can see here that there's a difference. Here, when we store x, we use store fast. Here, when we store x, we use store name. Um, and the same here for y store fast and store name. And the reason for that is you can also actually see that in the Python code when it's not in, in a string, but actually, uh, when it's actually uh, visible as Python code, you can see that the Y here is highlighted in the normal color in white, you can see that this Y here is gray. And the difference here in store name and store uh, fast, you can look it up in the Python documentation. To keep it very simple, what we're doing here is we're defining this in a local context here, whereas here we need to work with indices, we need to work with um, global variables, because we're creating here something that has to be visible to all the other functions to all the other statements as well. Whereas this y here is defined locally. And this is why this runs faster than this. There's more complicated stuff to it. But that's the basic idea. And the only thing that I want to show you here is that looking into the bytecode is not just something you do out of curiosity to understand why this uh, or how Python works under the hood, you actually want to sometimes debug using this disassemble feature. So that is quite interesting for curious people, but it's also quite useful when you have to debug some more complex problems. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 